Mm, top of the morning to you. This is a little GE radio. If you watched my other video, showed you the other day. It's a, I believe it's a P807C. I thought I would try and fire this up. I think I tried to fire this up just briefly, and it didn't work. I was a little disappointed, but that's okay. I really couldn't find a schematic for the thing. I was a little disappointed in that too. But I don't know. You can always use the old brain box. Make some assumptions. One of the problems I'm going to have right off the bat is that this radio, uh, the the what looks like a nine volt uh, snap connector for a nine volt battery, isn't nine volts. It's uh, one of the old uh, Everready batteries, transistor batteries. It's a big cube, and being a big cube, this is probably made in the 50s or maybe the 60s. The big cube kind of goes wrong with the rest of this radio. I mean, this is just a basic transistor radio. It's the size of a. Well, it's pretty good sized. Well, a couple things I need to do. I need to determine where the. Uh, which one of these is positive? I believe this one is. Typically, the male part of the transistor radio battery is always the positive. That's the little. the little button. It's this part. This is the female snap part. This is kind of a little snap. But I'm just going to test it to make sure. And we want the... Now, the male part of the battery, so that makes the female part of the radio the... And I believe the power lead came in over here. Yeah, okay. This is a kind of unusual radio in a couple ways. It has a field coil for a speaker. Normally, speakers just have magnets. Well, they're using a coil of wire to generate the magnetism. Which I don't know why, and I was thinking about that the other day, and GE used to do that in their old communication stuff, and their old pagers, I think. And I think it was to save energy. I have to do a little research. Ah, maybe not. Okay. Well, I guess the first thing we can do is... Since I don't have a GE, or a uh, R a snap radio battery that will fit that. I'm going to use a power supply. Let me check it again here to make sure it's really 9 volts. We don't need any accidents. This is probably full of germanium transistors. And how about maybe a little, a little action there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, it's 8.5. This is really annoying. <laughs> My bench is already crowded enough without a camera on it, so you're kind of looking at this at a 90. Um, the radio actually runs long ways this way, and this is the front of my bench. You usually don't see me down here too often, I just, I don't know, I, I need to overhaul this really bad, and I'm going to wait till spring, springs, and I think I'm going to do two things. I'm going to pull all this stuff out of here, whether I like it or not, and then I'm going to look at all of it and see whether I used it in the last century and then try and get rid of it. On. However, I mean, I've got this wacky stuff in here. Tektronics oscilloscope camera, a Polaroid Tektronics oscilloscope camera. There's a valuable item. I mean, it's fun, but... Okay. This is kind of unusual in another way. It's that the the negative is switched on this for some reason. Actually, I want to test that. Let's see. I find that if you're gonna if you're gonna work on a radio, no matter what it is, if you find out where the ground truly is right off the bat, you can beat the rush. And this is a this is this voltmeter is a Fluke 27, just in case oh, it happens to be. It happens to be one of my few meters that has a battery in it, to be real honest. <laughs> okay, so I think that battery... Actually... Okay. So that goes over here. This board is kind of, I believe, lacquered. Or shellacked.
that's a little unusual. That is probably not right. Uh, there we go, right there in the corner. And usually what I do is, nobody's going to care, or I can rub it off later as I take and mark that with a black sharpie, make a minus sign so I know what's going on. Check that one more time. Okay. So now when it comes time to look at voltages, I'll take and clip that clip lead on there. And I can poke around and this one will stay um, by itself. I don't have to hold it and do this thing. I have enough trouble chewing, uh, videotaping and uh, walking and chewing gum at the same time. So. Okay, let's just check that one more time. You can never check things too many times. Well, I suppose you can. That's weird. The radio's off, and there's a little... Weird. Has this thing already got an issue? Oh, it's a cap charging up. <clears throat> I think. Doesn't appear to change any. Let's flip that over. Maybe that switch. Maybe I'm looking. That switch is bad or something stupid. Although it felt pretty snappy. Now it's got. Okay. Okay, Doki. So we're ready for some fire. Okay, so this is probably a germanium-based transi uh, transistor radio. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and try and pre-tune the thing to about where I think there's something. And I'll try in there. And we'll just prop it up here. Since I don't use pads anymore for cable attenuation, I use them as spacers. Okay. Um, I've got a Hewitt Packard power supply, and you can limit the current on this, so I've gone ahead and limited it pretty hard. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn this on and turn it up and hope that this is right. Oh, there we go. Well, son of a gun, you know, that did not work last time I powered it up. I got a big egg on my face right there. <laughs> What the heck? Well, I guess I should be happy. Well, that just, I mean, I'm happy, but I'm... I'm careful there. Happy, but I'm not, does that make sense? it kind of gets to a point where it's loud and then that's as much as it has. I wonder if my power supply is going into current limit. Nope. Not terribly clear. Yeah, I was afraid that was going to happen. This is going to be annoying. Somebody kind of marked the. Uh, I don't know if it's marked or it looks like maybe it's cookie. Okay, that appears to work. Well, that's kind of a letdown, I guess, for you guys, not for me. So what I need to do to clean this, the 
This grill is kind of green here. I'm not big on restoring the faces and stuff on my radios. Yeah, I think somebody marked that. There's another mark there that's off. I don't think that's a factory one. Well, that may be there. There's a little kind of half moon shape in there. It's uh, right, right in there. Well, as far as performance, this thing is the sucks. <laughs> it's not very loud. A lot of these little transistor radios have um, have speed or uh, earphones on them, and a lot of times they really intended you to use the earphone. The earphone on this radio is this huge nut right here with a huge jack on it. Trying to peek in here real careful. Oh, you know what? Let's have let's live a little. Maybe if I can take this apart without a fight. This is where you see me screw up, probably. Yeah, that probably is. And this is a little unusual, also, that the uh, the tuning capacitor is. I always keep a little bowl or something, something with a lid on it. Um, to throw the screws in, I use this. Actually, this is I've got compartments in it. I just kind of use that. That way, you can kind of, you know, all the back screws go there, and all the chassis, you know, face screws go here. And I usually remember that stuff pretty well, but it helps. It speeds things along. Anything that helps you when you're repairing things is uh, saves you some time. That saves some money, which you can pass on to the customer. Hopefully, since I'm the customer, I can waste all the time I want. Well, what do we got to do here? I gotta slide that. There's a little piece of cardboard there. It's so stiff. There's something holding that up in there. It doesn't feel good. Feels like there's something holding that baby together. Oh, you, that's mean. Yeah. Hmm, okay. So how does that... That's just... Well, there's a really short wire from the, the on-off volume control to the chassis. It's keeping me from... Opening that up all the way. That's kind of ornery. How'd you. Uh... I guess, theoretically, you would have to take the control out or snip that wire. Or I could have followed it. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, alright. Okay, I take that back. It isn't. It's uh, what they've done. Kind of explain this. It's really hard to see. Yeah. Maybe I won't explain this. Well, I'll do the best I can. Okay. There's a component on the circuit board with you know the two legs, like that. They've ran the wiring through there, so when you bend it, it's it's pulling on it. If I shove the wiring back through there, I'll get it out of there. It's actually a capacitor, not a big coil like that. So let's see if I can get that weasel through there without a fight. You gotta sit down and look at this stuff real carefully. You can cause yourself some heartache by not looking at this stuff too closely. Uh, acquaintance of mine on YouTube the other day was working on a radio and he kind of got a little happy with the clippers there and later discovered that uh, the uh, he was taking a chassis uh, out of a case 
So he just clipped the speaker loose, and later he discovered the speaker had two, uh, had a plug, a couple pin plugs. It's an annoying little time bomb. So we're just slowly opening this up. There isn't really a lot in this thing. It's pretty scary. Early transistor radios are really, actually they're really fun to work on. There's so many, there's so few components that it's hard to do anything to go wrong. And uh, this thing has a giant, actually there's a couple caps in here. Here's a 500 microfarad electrolytic, a really old plastic one. And next to it is a a waxed paper cap. I was hoping to see the value. It is it's just on the edge of not showing. That's kind of annoying. Let's see. It's a okay. This is a point. It's a point four seven, a point five microfarad at a hundred volts. <laughs> you gotta love that. I don't think that'll ever go bad in short. There's actually a little bead of solder in here. Just kind of watch it stuck down with some. Uh... This is probably wave solder, but it has a lot of flux on it. So let's see here. Let me find something to point with. Here's probably the local oscillator coil right here. Um, IF, hmm, that might, I don't know, that might be, it's hard to say. I'm going to guess that's a local officer. IF, three cans, maybe. Um, there are one, two, three, four, looks like only four, maybe five transistors. Oh, there's a little baby. There's, you can't see that very well. Where does it even go? Oh, here it is. Why won't that focus? Focus, you giant lump. There it goes. There's a little baby diode, a 1N60. That's a Toshiba one. It's kind of cool. Man, there's not a lot to see in here. There's a few caps. curious what that giant paper cap runs. Goes to here. I don't know. Goes to there. Don't know what that runs. It's another little solder bead. This is wave soldered, which is very interesting. So as small as this is, you probably could have soldered this by hand. Oh well. Well, a little disappointed. It's like the, that's like the second time that's happened. I know that this radio did not work. Oh well, we'll learn by doing. Well, let's see if we can get her back in here. around a little bit. Whenever you put this stuff back together, especially these screws, these screws are self-tapping, which means there's a little um, driver point. It's just not going to focus. You know why? Because it's out. I used, nice Sony used to do that. There you go. See that little cutter there? That cuts into the plastic as you um, screw it together. So when it comes time to screw these back together, what I do is I take them and I back them up until you feel it click. 
and then carefully drive them forward and you'll go back in the same threads that it cut. If you don't, you'll cut new threads and eventually you might get away with that one or two times but you'll cut new threads enough that it'll strip the whole, it'll just weaken the thing and strip the hole completely out. And that goes for the little Phillips, you know, a lot of modern stuff like, I don't know, I'm just going to use an example like your wireless phones and stuff or like that. They have little thread cutter uh, screws in them. These are, these are a perfect example. They have little thread cutting screws in them. It's just a, uh, I don't know, a pro tip. How about that? How much I clean my fingernails? They just get gunked up. Well, gee, that was pretty exciting. I guess I don't know. Kind of curious what that gunk is on the front. This almost looks like it had gold paint. I don't know if this grill cloth is cloth. It looks trimmed. I suppose I could. And it, I can't imagine that cloth corroded, but it looks like corrosion. It's green like on a penny. This really isn't a very pretty radio. It's kind of ugly. <laughs> and we'll snap that back under there. It's just a basic transistor radio. Is probably you know, it was probably ten bucks in the 1960s, which was probably a lot of money back then. Well, so much for that brilliant idea. I probably got to find something I know is broke. Punctured a hole in my idea. I thought that would be interesting, especially since I didn't have a schematic. I tried to find one online, and didn't have any success. I suppose I could take something and clean that. Uh, there's a little sticker. It probably came from the garage sale. At least it's just a sticker. God, I remember going to a garage sale one time and then. Uh, I had a lot of old um, car, you know, stuff like oil and this, that, and other thing, car stuff in cans, but the cans are pretty old. And uh, there was another gentleman there, and I'm kind of looking, I'm not a big collector of old cans, but some people are, and they're, they're kind of cool to look at. And the guy says, well, how much is this? It's not marked. You know, he picks it up, and the owner grabs it, gets out a Sharpie, and writes $2. <laughs> and the guy... The guy kind of went, ah! And the owner walked off. And the guy was standing there. He was going to buy it. It was a pretty... He was interested in it, but not with this big mark on it. I said, let me show you a little trick. So there was a can of WD-40 there. I got a... Uh, I usually keep a paper towel in my pocket. I took this paper towel and sp spotted it with a little WD-40. And he just wiped it right off there. Before it had a chance to dry. Luckily, that can had a kind of a film of oil. It was one of those old paper cans that oil used to come in. If you're uh, old enough, you remember those. If you're too, if you're younger, you probably don't remember that. That was the way uh, oil used to get shipped. You bought a quart of oil. It was a big round can. Well, I think I'm gonna let you go. This is, I guess, it's a it's a win, but not for what I had planned. <laughs> Okie dokie. Well. Take her easy. If you have any questions or comments, like always, feel free to leave them. And we'll talk to you later. Have a groovy day.